hear this. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, and actually, there is a laptop down here. I was told there would be somebody here to turn it on for me. <laughs> Don't see anybody here. <laughs> Let me see if I can, uh, hmm. You're right. Uh, this is a problem I have. Uh, you, you, usually, uh, Lenore comes to these talks with me, and she's my backup help. Who knows? OK, well, maybe somebody will come in. That's all right. That's all right. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll manage. <laughs> I, I think this is in the right place, but I'm not sure. It doesn't matter. It, it can, it can. It it's okay. I, uh, is this the slide? Well, I have no idea. <laughs> no, that's, that's, uh, that's Don Knuth. Okay. Download. <laughs> let's see. Coming there. Okay. Well, that's all right. No, uh, human computation. I, I think I'll, I'll be okay. Thank you very much. Sure. Should I close this or? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. No. Click. Click on what? No, I don't want that. <laughs> Okay, I see, I, see, I see, maybe by, okay, good. <laughs> that was a very good suggestion, close, close it. Yeah, so this, this is a talk on human computation. Uh, basically, what I've been interested in is, uh, is trying to apply some of the theory that we do in computer science to what it is that we humans do, or sometimes must do in our head. Uh, but first, uh, I'd like to start with some personal observations and thoughts on you, Dick. Um, so uh, it's hard to roast Dick. For one thing, I really like the guy. For another, he is so enormously competent. He knows a lot. He reads a lot. He has and maintains connections to everyone. He has impeccable taste. Uh, his incredible contributions to the cook carp leaven theory of NP-completeness will, in my opinion, long stand the test of time. And uh, his, his, you know, his work in it that came out of his knowledge of a great many interesting different practical problems, like clique and traveling salesman problem and graph coloring and so on. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Cook came out with NP-completeness, then uh, had an example of clique, and then Carp said, oh, clique, that's important. <laughs> and that was great, all the wonderful stuff that came out of that after there. So indeed, when his work on the 21 NP-complete problems came out, he pointed out that there was a conference at the time having talks on about that many papers, all of which were NP-complete. <laughs> that's great. Um, so, uh, let's see, uh, uh, Dick is heavily biased to theoretical computer science and actually not much interested, in fact, disinterested in stuff like botany. So, uh, did you know that? I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen the... Uh, this, uh, this movie, The Martian, where Matt Damon uh, at some point quips that he's the best botanist on the planet. I don't like science fiction. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, 
Anyway, at one point when I suggested that two-year-old Jeremy was showing was a, showing what appeared to me to be a definite interest in botany. He replied, I hope not. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. Okay, uh, which reminds me, um, I must surely have made Dick cringe, though he didn't show it, though he was a terribly good sport about it, when I gave Jeremy his first driving lesson at age two. <laughs> Did you know that a confident two-year-old can learn to drive a car? <laughs> he can't reach the accelerator or the brakes. I did that for him. But he can steer. When he saw the car going a wee bit to the left, he turned the steering wheel all the way to the right. <laughs> and he then saw it going to the right. He turned it all the way to the left. And the car careened down the street in a zigzag kind of a way. It was fun to be at Berkeley with Dick. For one, he taught hugely informative courses. I learned a lot from him, often indirectly through the students taking his courses. Uh, that's how I learned that a coupon collector must buy N log N boxes of cereal to have a reasonable chance to get a full set of N coupons. Remember, you it must have been sometime after that course you asked me, do you know how many, and I said N log N. He, you didn't know that uh, uh, Faith Fick had just told me. <laughs> and anyway, you were pleased that I knew something here. Okay. <laughs> I also learned specific, wonderful applications of KY's independence from you, Dick. Uh, in this case, uh, through Stephen Rudich. Um, my biggest heartache at Berkeley was every time it appeared that Dick would leave Berkeley for Stanford. The possibility he might do that really killed me. At one point, I think around 1979, the head of IEOR did this incredibly stupid thing. He demanded that Dick, who was one of their best, if not the best of their teachers, teach some low-level course that Dick had no interest in, none. It was kind of like when EECS asked me to teach Fortran. <laughs> but EECS didn't press me on it. IEOR did press Dick. So I used the opportunity to persuade Dick to come 100% into CS. I told him he could teach whatever he wanted and however much or little he wanted. Maybe I wasn't entitled to do that, but <laughs> I did, and uh, besides, I knew you were, okay, I knew you. My greatest joy was to see him take me up on it and go 100% into CS. And he did teach a lot and well the appropriate courses. Uh, Dick was founding chairman for computer science. He was eloquent. He made us computer science faculty so proud when he spoke for us. I am really fortunate to count you a friend. Thank you. I feel the same way about you. <laughs> Thank you, Dick. Uh, my, court, my, my talk today is uh, it's sort of a it's supposed to be a lecture on human computation, uh, which is something I've been working on lately, uh, and um, I was going to talk about uh, captures. Um, these uh, so I'll talk about captures. But I th thought last night, oh gee, this is a this is an opportunity for me to give Dick, actually Dick and Jeremy, a gift. Uh, actually, this will be a gift for all of you. 
Uh, so I've been working on password creation schemas. These are algorithms that a human can do in their head to transform websites, the website names viewed as challenges, into passwords, which are the responses. Um, you know, of course, that you're supposed to have different passwords for different websites. <laughs> you probably also know that before you enter your password, you should make sure you're at the right website. Lately, banks are beginning to realize this. They show you a picture that you've selected to make sure that you realize you're at the right place. But of course, if the picture weren't there, would you remember? you probably just type in your password. That, that would give away something. Uh, so with my password schemas, there is no problem like that. Uh, uh, you need to know the website name in order to produce the password. So the, the schema transforms the website name, like Amazon or Google or eBay or Amex, it transforms that into the password. Uh, so, uh, uh, so, uh, so I have a, uh, yes, uh, okay, so, so I'm going to give you some examples. Right, this is where I'll open up this laptop. Uh, now what? Should be something, that, oh yeah, press, probably return, no. Okay. No, there, something. Okay, good. Now let's see if I can go up to, where's the, can, can you put a? Yes. I've got only two overheads. This is one of them. Uh, so let me just mention this because uh, uh, I want to give this gift to Dick and Jeremy uh, and then later to you. And so uh, I'm going to do this by telling you that uh, uh, in the summer, Stephen Rudich has this program at Carnegie Mellon called Andrew's Leap. Andrew's Andrew Carnegie. Andrew's Leap has a lot of bright high school students. And it's a lot of fun for me to give my talk. Uh, uh, basically, the first time I went to give this talk, uh, I, uh, uh, what I did was I, I uh, asked them for challenges. You know, if you go to brain.com or train.net, uh, th these are possible website names. Anyway, I asked them to give me challenges. And then I transform their challenges, which are words like John, Mary, whatever you want. I wouldn't take Amex or Amazon, but other words I would take. And uh, I, I show them that I could transform them into passwords. I have a Python program. I know despite my ineptitude here, I actually can write Python program to, uh, to actually uh, do this. And I would have one student check me that I was doing the right transformation because actually I make mistakes, and, uh, and, and that was good. But fortunately, uh, and then I would have them, as I said, uh, suggest challenges. Uh, at one point, uh, oh, by the way, they, they, of course, they would see that I could transform a challenge into a password in never more than 25 seconds. The students who, who I asked to time me, timed me and said 18 seconds. But anyway, it can be done quickly. Uh, here you see, uh, uh, oh yeah. So here you you see uh, uh, brain, train, grain, and drain, which one of those high school students uh, came up with. I, I, I love it. High school students, it's their job. It's like an IQ test. Actually, this is a great IQ test for you too. It's like an IQ test. I had told them how the thing works, but they still have to, from that, be able to get more details. They have to be able to see what's going on here. Uh, brain, train, grain, drain. You see, the, the intent is to try to see uh, what might be going on. And uh, do you see anything going on there? 
brain, train, grain, drain. Uh, yeah, that's because I didn't, the program actually generates 10 letters, but I only put five up. Uh, okay, so uh, let's see, now how do I go to the next one? Okay, so here's another one. Uh, somebody, what happened there? Magic one, magic two, there seems to be a magic missing. But anyway, uh, somebody had asked me how I go about changing my passwords when I go from one year to the next. And so I said, give me a challenge. They said, magic. And then I produced the response to magic one, magic two, magic three, and so on. And again, I can ask you, uh, do you see what's going on there? Uh, so I'm going to leave this up for now because this is an IQ test for you to try to see what's going on. And in the, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask Jeremy and Dick to come up. And, <laughs> and uh, I'm going to tell them how to do something like this. Uh, the, the, you'll notice there are two boards here, separated in such a way that one per No, stay here because I have to explain it to you. See, I'm going to first whisper in your ear how to do this. And while they're trying to figure out what's going on there, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll whisper and, and, and write some things here. Oh, yeah, yeah, Mike. <laughs> Thank you very much. This could have been a disaster here. <laughs> OK, so let's see. So don't forget, you're supposed to figure out what's going on there. By the way, did you see what's going on there? You see anything that's going on there? What? The last number in the magic? Really? <laughs> <laughs> You'll notice that there's also one, two, three, four, zero, which is completely, you know, at, at magic four goes to one, two, three, four, zero. That's completely has nothing, no, no reason for it. Pure coincidence. Okay, so now you have to come up with a challenge to give these people. Please don't make it a huge challenge. I mean, American Express is kind of getting there. You, you know, make it a four-letter challenge. What? K-A-R-P. That's good, because you're supposed to be able to spell it. And I think these two people do know how to spell it. <laughs> so uh, yes, write it down. And see, now we're going to see. Uh, so they have not heard this before. They, they don't know what this is. LAUGHTER <laughs> Go ahead. You, you oh, spoke, okay. you, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. So it's so 3 past K or 3 past T? Shh. 4 past T and then 3 past K. No. 4, 3, 2, 4. Oh. You can just change the S. He, he, this, this happens when, when I do this, too. I, uh, I, I often put in my passwords more than once. So, are they the same? Hey, good. Uh, that worked. Do you want to do another one? No, no, no. That's not, that's not interesting. I have a guess. Is it I have a guess for the method. You have a guess for the method. It's okay. So, uh, Don, would you care to give a challenge? Oh, I can. Um, is that 
Is they have to, no, no, make it three or four. You're not supposed to produce, come on, make it a four letter word. A nice one. They have to be able to spell it. Co and P. Good. That's a good way to say it, yes. No, no, this is fantastic. I have done this with other people. You're very good, Dick. I mean, uh, <laughs> usually <laughs> past 70, they're much slower. <laughs> Thank you. Did I get it right? You got the same thing he got. Yeah, so it must be right. <laughs> Thank you, Jeremy. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Carp dot edu? Carp dot. Oh, can I invert? Yeah, yeah. yeah they can invert. <laughs> yeah, of course I told them how to do it. I can invert. <laughs> you want me to invert it? Okay, I need to have a pen, okay. Well, I'll just do it up here. You believe me? You believe me? I mean, I don't have Jeremy over there doing it too, okay. It's not secure. I'll, I'll tell you what, uh, what will be secure. That's supposed to be an end, so. This. Crossing. Crossing. Did you choose that? <laughs> I'll tell you the general method, which is pretty secure. Uh, I, I only, uh, it's based on a telephone number. You have to know a telephone number preferably not the telephone number you currently use, but you know, some telephone number you remember from when you were a kid. Nobody, use that telephone number. Okay, then, so, so here's what you do. You, you use that, you take the first digit of that telephone number. Uh, the, 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 what I gave them was, the, they had to remember the telephone number. 432-432-4324. They did remember that, that's good. So, and then uh, what they uh, were told to do is, uh, uh, you see the, uh, I'll look at the co and P, you see the P, start with the last letter, uh, go four past it. Go four past the P, Q, R, S, T, that gives you the T. Then go to the C, that's above what you just wrote. Go three past it, because C, D, E, F, there's the F. Then uh, go
go to the, now that you've done the F, you see the O, go to past it, O, P, Q. Here's the Q. And then there's the uh, N above it, go four past it, because that's the next digit. Four past N is O, P, Q, R. Uh, this is not very secure. Uh, what you, the actual thing that I suggest you do is you create a sentence for yourself, uh, which has all the letters of the alphabet. You know some sentences like that. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Don't use that. <laughs> Don't use it. You, you make up your own sentence or uh, make up, uh, take a few words that have most of the letters. That will do. And then what you do is uh, you go four past that R. That's how we got uh, four past the P took you to R. But you don't use R. What you do is you look in the sentence, the quick brown. You see the R in brown? The quick brown fox, you use the O that comes after the. And then you go on to C. Well, uh, C, you use a telephone number to get the T, and then the quick the, the, it has a T in it, it becomes H. And uh, so on. Uh, then you, F, the quick brown fox. There's an O. And then uh, Q. Well, what comes after Q? Uh, U. So that would be the string you produce. You use your telephone number and then the string and uh, if you uh, get reasonably good at it, it takes you no more than 20 to 30 seconds to do it. OK. What? Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's a very good point. So uh, I have to tell you a secret about my passwords that you would get as soon as you saw any one of them. All my passwords start with a lowercase a, an uppercase a, an at sign, and a one. <laughs> the, uh, let me just mention, because um, that's very good, Mike, that the rules that uh, the, 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 you know, these non-theoreticians, they, they don't, they, they make up these rules which are so easy to circumvent. They, they're just not. Uh. In fact, I have, uh, one of the first things you do as a theoretician when you look at the password problem is you realize that it's a problem of transforming challenges to responses. I've never seen that in the literature. Never. Has anybody here seen that mentioned? Yes. It's a different schema. Uh, it turns out that since that's, that's an old schema, it's the one I use, it's not as good because when you generate digits, it's really not as good as generating letters. In fact, you know, these, these password checkers, you know, you make up passwords, you're supposed to try, try them out on password checkers. Actually, that's a bad idea. You're going to tell Google your passwords? Uh, anyway. Uh, these password checkers are just terrible. They're, they're just really poor, like, like this business of use strange letters and, uh, okay, so, so the, you, you wanna, uh, uh, here's the password checker I use. I have done no, uh, have no idea how good this is. But first of all, I have the schema. I will never actually uh, use a password checker on an actual password. I use it on, for challenges that I'm not interested in. Uh, take the password you get from a challenge that you're not really interested in and see if Google recognizes the word that's produced. Now that's a nice password checker. If Google recognizes the word, it's not a good password. Or it could be good, but it's not as good as when Google gives up its turn, you know, says, ouch, I don't see it. I, I have nothing, I have nothing that looks like that. You have to watch out because you put in a, a string of letters and it will often suggest Scrabble. But Manuel, once you ask Google, it's public. You have to turn off, you have to do private Google search. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, I, well, I, I don't rely on that. I just use challenge, I, use, I, use, I test the schema. I don't test the actual password. I now know that for, for this, for example, uh, you really want to have challenges that are seven or eight letters long. Uh, but for digits, they have to be much longer. These, these are only, I've only given you half the, the passwords there. The, the, the passwords I produce are actually twice that length. Yes? The scheme you gave has a property of changing one letter of a challenge changes one letter of a response. Uh, changing one, yes, it's, it's bad in that respect. It's bad. The one up, up there doesn't have that property. But uh, the one up there takes a bit of time to, and it only produces digits. Uh, much better would be something where, so, but nevertheless, it doesn't matter. The security, the proof of security, is based on the fact, uh, is based on how many challenge uh, responses you have to see in order to produce, in order to uh, enable the adversary to, who knows the schema, to be able to figure out what you're doing. So basically, it, it, the proof just depends on the fact that there's some, that uh, Cohen P has uh, uh, some letter that you didn't, didn't appear in CARP, so that you'd be hard pressed to tell what it was. The, the proofs in this human computation are all just, they are not, compu they are not, uh, they don't make use of, 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 uh, uh, of um, they're, they're just information theoretic. The proofs are the form. Uh, uh, if you haven't seen enough of the information, then you simply can't. Information theoretic proofs. The, the fact is that uh, humans can't do very much computation in their head. And almost anything that I can ask a human to do, if you know what the schema is, you can, actually, you can, you can, you can easily write a program to break it. You know, like uh, I've seen kids, uh, there's a kid who can multiply two five-digit numbers in his head in three minutes. It's pretty amazing. He does it with using his hands in funny ways. He can do, but how long would it take to factor the number? It doesn't take any, any time at all. So the point is that uh, the usual security uh, that we expect that uh, uh, doesn't come up. Uh-huh. To, to, to nice. Yeah. Okay. You have to memorize a poem, and, uh, and then uh, it's like a one-way pad. Well, once you're done with that poem, you don't, hopefully don't use it. In fact, hopefully it's not a very well-known poem, or <laughs> it's, it's a poem you made up yourself. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, um, let's see. Well, let's see. I, uh, oh, I could just mention another thing about the, the schema that, uh, that's fun for me. First of all, uh, let me just tell you that uh, th these are pretty secure. People worry about, in this group, everybody worries about security when the real question is, uh, is it humanly usable? Can you actually, as a human being, do it? Uh, as, as long as every, every challenge is producing a different password, there's no problem. So here's, here's something that uh, I have experience with, because about once a month, Lenore comes to me and says, Manuel, what's your password for such and such a site? Uh, the last time, she wanted to know REI. What's your password for REI? So I could honestly tell her, look, I, I don't know if I even have if I'm even registered at REI, but if I am, here's my password. <laughs> and REI is three, so I produce six digits, but, um, and I start it with lowercase a, uppercase a, at sign, and a one. Right, so. uh, and it's amazing, in the case of REI, she calls down and says, hey, yeah, you're registered. Um, Air conditioning just came on. Let's see. When did this, this talk was supposed to start at 3? I'm way past, right? 
I, I was going to talk to you about captures, but uh, uh, where that came about, but I think I'm out of time here. So let me, uh, these, these are very uh, kind people here. They haven't put up notices that I'm way out of time. Um, okay, so I'm, I'll, I'll just end it right there. Thank you very much, Dick.